building your fusers. The Guinness Book of World Records has a new addition, the youngest person to ever achieve nuclear fusion. And he did it from his playroom. Yeah, this is any normal, any normal playroom and no ordinary kid. Meet Jackson Oswald. Imagine a typical suburban playroom, toy cars, video games, a kid's blanket fort. Now imagine that playroom transformed into a real. He spent hours reading books about physics and watching videos about the stars. One day he saw a TED talk by Taylor Wilson, a teenager who built a fusion reactor, and thought, why not me? At 11 years old, Jackson decided he would do the same. He told himself that just because he was young didn't mean he couldn't do something serious. His parents noticed his passion and supported it. A spark was lit in that playroom lab. Inspired by other young scientists, Jackson dove into research. He learned how the sun works, how it fuses atoms together to give us light and warmth. He figured out that if he could force tiny hydrogen atoms to collide here on Earth, he could release a bit of that star power himself. He watched videos, read articles, and talked to hobbyists online about fusion. Every new piece of knowledge turned his spark into a flame. Soon Jackson had a clear goal, build his own fusion device using everyday parts and a lot of creativity. Building a fusion reactor sounds impossible, but Jackson's secret was resourcefulness. He scoured the internet for parts, finding items on eBay and in old equipment. He got a sturdy metal chamber, like a big side. He sourced a high voltage power supply to create a massive electric field. And he even got a thin metal grid, which would sit in the center of the chamber. To power it all, he bought special hydrogen gas called deuterium. With support from his parents, Jackson assembled these pieces in his, his reactor roar to life. Jackson needed to understand fusion itself. Nuclear fusion is the process that powers our sun and stars. In fusion, two light atoms, for example, hydrogen atoms, smash together and merge into one heavier atom, like helium. When they fuse, they release a burst of energy. A tiny bit of starlight trapped in each atom is suddenly freed. The tricky part is that atoms normally repel each other. They're like tiny magnets that push away. To make them collide, you need a lot of energy, heat or force. On Earth, fusion usually happens in giant labs or stars, so a kid doing it is truly remarkable. But the basic idea is simple. Push atoms together fast enough, and they fuse, releasing energy. Jackson's reactor is a special device often called a fuser, but you can think of it as a miniature star machine. Inside the vacuum chamber, Jackson created a powerful electric field. He made the inner wire grid, a metal cage, very negative, and the outer shell at ground. When he pumped in his hydrogen gas, the atoms in there lost electrons and became positively charged ions. These ions are attracted to the negatively charged grid. So they zoom toward the middle at incredible speeds. When two ions crash into each other with enough force, they can fuse. It's like two speedy cars on a collision course. If they hit just right, something new is made. In Jackson's case, hydrogen atoms fused to create helium and shot out a neutron as proof. The fuel for Jackson's little star was deuterium, a special kind of hydrogen. Regular hydrogen has one proton, deuterium has one proton and one neutron, making it a bit heavier. Deuterium is perfect for fusion experiments because it can fuse with another deuterium atom. He carefully filled the chamber with deuterium gas. At first, only a tiny amount is needed just a whisper of gas in the vacuum. This fuel was the key to unlocking fusion. When the electric field was turned on, it gave the deuterium atoms a huge energy boost, making them race around and collide in the center of the chamber. Every successful collision was a tiny fusion reaction. 
He had built his own neutron counter to measure fusion. The counter clicked. Neutrons were being released inside the chamber. Neutrons are telltale signs that fusion happened. Jackson had done it. In his playroom, among tools and wires, two deuterium atoms had fused. Excitement must have filled the room. He just created a real nuclear reaction. This moment was the culmination of years of curiosity, learning, and hard work. A 12-year-old had brought a piece of the sun into his own home. Why is Jackson's little experiment such a big deal? Because nuclear fusion represents a dream of clean, almost limitless energy. Fuel industry. Imagine a world where electricity comes from fusion reactors instead of burning coal or oil. That could drastically cut air pollution and CO2 emissions. Oil, gas and coal have powered our world for over a century, but they cause climate change and can be expensive. Fusion offers an alternative, fuel from sure where clean energy wins and the air gets cleaner. Fusion energy could be a game changer for the planet. No more smoggy skies from coal plants, no oily seas from drilling accidents, and no massive oil spills. Instead, cities could run on the same kind of process that lights up the sun. That means virtually no greenhouse gases and a big hand against climate change. Of course, Jackson's Playroom Reactor is a tiny step. But every big change starts small. His story reminds us to dream of a greener world and work toward it. If scientists continue to innovate, one day fusion power might light up homes, hospitals and schools. Maybe even the playroom that houses them. Jackson's journey also illustrates a powerful idea. Science doesn't only happen in white-coated labs. With curiosity and dedication, a motivated person can do astonishing things anywhere, even at home. His playroom lab wasn't filled with high-tech gear, though it was high-tech by any 12-year-old standards. He used imagination, basic scientific tools, and even online advice from experts. This shows that science can be accessible. Who knows? In the future, more kids might build experiments in their garages exploring robotics, solar power, or genetics. Jackson's example means each one of us has the potential to contribute to science and change the world. Jackson's story is as much about grit as it is about genius. He didn't succeed on the first try or the 10th. It took long nights of testing, failures, and tweaks. There were times when nothing happened or when alarms might have caused worry like when local safety officials came by to check there was no harmful radiation. But Jackson kept going. He studied more, asked questions, and fixed problems step by step. This perseverance paid off. The message is clear. Amazing goals often take hard work. Jackson showed that sticking with a challenge, even when it's really tough, can lead to breakthrough success.